We've learned about the process of active learning through inquiry. We've also learned that active learning can be achieved through inquiry-based, problem-based, or project-based learning. Inquiry-based learning follows six phases to lead to finding appropriate sources for and support of thinking skills of the learners. We've also learned that through using a 10-step model called InTech, we can best integrate technology into the lesson planning of instruction. Looking to go beyond simple inquiry and technology integration, research has shown that problem-based learning can encourage the development of understanding and skills through exploration and experimentation. Problem-based learning starts with an ill-structured problem. How do we design problems? Let's take a look. The InTech process provides a way to efficiently integrate technology into instructional lessons. If you remember, the third part of the InTech process is to specify the problem. If we are taking a problem-based learning approach and using this third step of InTech model, how do we begin to specify the problem? In the InTech process, two characteristics of PBL appear. In order to get close to achieving engagement with the learner and having some success in meeting learning objectives, PBL problems must be highly motivated and interesting to the learner. Additionally, the problem must be relevant and realistic. How does one go about achieving these two goals? Perhaps starting with the learner themselves and understanding what motivates them, what is of interest to them, and what is appropriate or relevant for the learner, and not necessarily for the teacher. These two questions are key in getting started to specifying a worthy problem or problems. Dr. David Mauerson from the University of Oregon wrote in 2007 that you can get to a better defined problem in addressing these four questions. Notice how Mauerson suggests a focus on the learner with his questions. How can we, after all, ever get to the questions which are motivating, interesting, realistic, and relevant if we don't start with the learner? If we take Morrison's questions as key, how might we engage the student? Experts suggest getting to a clear understanding between the teacher and students about the problem. One possible way to achieve this is through developing a problem statement together. The teacher can lead the efforts, but involve the students in the process. The process can include actually list, listing the problem and then creating a think sheet to prepare with the students. The think sheet can list the givens or those things that are known with assumptions and other considerations. Following the given, the group can specify and list the goals on the think sheet. Finally, the teacher and the students can complete the think sheet by identifying the resources that will be available to use. Collecting these data together and documenting them may be most helpful in creating well-defined, interesting, motivating, realistic, and relevant problems. In 2006, Oi Hung published an article in the Interdisciplinary Journal of Problem-Based Learning. Hung's article the 3C3R model, a conceptual framework for designing problems in PBL, posited that well-defined problems are crucial for the success of problem-based learning. Hung developed the 3C3R model as a conceptual model to this approach. Hung's model includes six components, which we'll refer to as the three C's and the three R's of the model. Hung calls the three C's the core components of the model, and they include content, context, and connection. The core components are primarily concerned with issues of appropriateness and sufficiency of content knowledge, content contextualization, and knowledge integration. Hung's model includes three other key elements, the R's. The R's are considered the processing components in the model, and they are designed to facilitate mindful and meaningful engagement in the PBL process. The R's in the model are researching, reflecting, and reasoning. Here is Hung's model depicted in its most commonly recognized graphical representation. 
Notice that there isn't necessarily a sequential process depicted. That's because this is a model as a conceptual framework. Consider a framework as much like an approach or set of standards as a way to approach something. Hung's framework is for designing problems. While there's no one way with the 3C3R model, the suggestion is that the model will represent the key components that need to be considered to ensure success in designing problems. Diving into the core components, we can see content as front and key. Here Hung provides us three attributes about content. Ask what content may be available and what is relevant and realistic. The content will help drive a clear definition to the problem statement. Hung suggests that the model points us to looking closely at the content, which will help provide the problem with breadth and knowledge. The second C is context. How authentic is the problem? This may largely be determined by the contextual information in which the problem is situated. Hung points out address validity, contextualization, and motivation as you look to the context of the problem. The final C in the core components is connection. Hung tells us that learners must be able to interlink sources and knowledge and be able to cross-reference topics and ask the problem designer to consider how knowledge is packaged. Hung asks the designer to consider how connections will be made between the knowledge and the problem. The model offers two approaches to achieving connection, a prerequisite approach or overlapping approach. Each approach, is, as listed here, offers some advantages and th some thoughts around the types of problems you may be working with and how to make connections. While the core components of the model support content and concept learning, the processing components, researching, reasoning, and reflecting address the learner's cognitive processes and problem-solving skills. Researching and the other processing components serve to guide the learner to the core components. Additionally, they steer the learner to the intended goals, balance the learner's cognitive levels based on their readiness, and remove any issues learners may have with problem-based learning scenarios. The first stage in the processing is researching. Researching helps the learner understand the problem and looks to ensure that the learner is researching the necessary information for a given domain. Ill-structured problems are often going to be open to interpretation, so the researching phase is looking to use the goal and the context to ensure the research is supported by content and connection. Reasoning promotes application of the knowledge gained during the researching process. Putting knowledge into practice rather than just memorizing is supported through analysis and generating hypotheses. The reasoning phase looks at analyzing the aspects and the nature of all the variables and underlying systems of the problem, along with the relationships between them. The learners will process and integrate new knowledge into meaningful knowledge. During the researching and reasoning phases, the learner will be using high-order thinking skills, which are not naturally part of their cognitive base. This suggests that practice and training will help them hone these types of skills during their academic life, and the processing components, such as reasoning, support this aspect of PBL. Through reflection in the last R of the model, the learner are given opportunity to organize and integrate their knowledge into a more conceptual framework. The diagram shown here depicts the interaction of the researching and reasoning components and suggests that with high information and high reasoning, the learner can reach an optimal level of achieving full problem simulation in a self-directed manner. This is shown through point C on the graph. These sorts of levels leads the learner to enhance transfer of knowledge to different contexts and improve problem-solving skills. During the reflection phase, Hung suggests th that two types of reflective processes should be considered, a formative process and a summative process. 
With a formative process, the reflection should occur during the researching and reasoning processes so that strategies can be adjusted during the course of the learning and the learner can assess their own process. The summative process typically includes reflecting at the end of the term or assignment. With a summative reflection, the learner is encouraged to continue learning about the topic and situates the learner in an environment that is familiar to experts in the area. The 3C3R model attempts to optimize the key components of problem-based learning. The model makes things common for teachers, designers, and learners, and supports effective problem-based learning design. While the model is not a straightforward step-by-step -step process, it does have a flexible approach. These six components of the model work together to lead toward sound problem-based learning. Hung's model can stand alone and be used during the in-tech process. If we look to integrate technology into our lesson planning design and we look to use problem-based learning as part of the process, the 3C3R model provides us with another key element to successful learning and engagement. Problem-based learning is a proven tool for advancing learners' knowledge and skills. Hung has developed the 3C3R model to help us better design problems to be used in the process and meet curricular standards.